when she buttons it with like, isn't Jesus enough? It's sort of bumper stickery. If you're an average evangelical, you're going to have an idea what that means. Yeah. But also you're not maybe thinking of like, yeah, your experience, just have Jesus. Don't rely on your experience. But how do you have Jesus, but through experience, even like reading the Bible and reading about Jesus, you're reading an interpretation of Jesus that was experienced by people and translated and passed down to you. And then whatever Jesus is in your mind is a product of your experiences. And so, well, you can go too far. Is knowledge an experience? You're interpreting it through your experiences always. I don't think you cannot do that. I guess I can't sign up for just calling everything experience. Because that sounds like that's what you're doing. But there's a slide if you're in, not doing that, then well, say it differently. I might be using my words. Use your words better, Zach. I might be doing it poorly. But let's say the benefit of the doubt for her argument, the far end of what's wrong from her perspective and, and maybe most of ours is, I'm seeking experience. I had an experience. Therefore, that is my absolute truth. And I think all of us are against that. Like I'm against oh, it's my experience, therefore it's correct. I always want to be testing my experiences to make sure they're correct. But to say like, isn't Jesus just enough? None of us get to see Jesus now. So we all have to put together a picture of what Jesus is like in our mind based on reading the Bible and our mm-hmm. prayer life and meditation, whatever, which is going to get filtered through our previous experiences. And so, and that's not wrong. It's just, she's all, I feel like she's kicking the can down the road. She thinks she's putting a button on it, just Jesus. But ultimately there's always experience and we shouldn't ignore that either. And that's not always, experience isn't always wrong. That's not what she, I don't think she's, you know, uh, that, last, that, that is, last line is a little problematic, but I don't think she's saying that having experience me, is wrong. I don't, I don't think, I don't, I would not say having a spiritual experience is wrong. I think she's saying it's, if that's your focus, looking for it. If 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 you're trying to over index on that and and it's the person again, I I think the better way to describe it is over spiritualizing. And maybe uh, maybe in let's can we use that as a working definition right now for mysticism? Sure. Because we're all dumb and we don't know what we're talking about. Agreed. Okay. Um. So so we, I think we've all encountered that person in our lives before, who who over spiritualizes and sees inaccurately we would say sees god in every single thing and sometimes it's like that was that was just a barking dog though like it wasn't it wasn't the spirit telling you maybe you should move to tennessee all you people who have been moving to tennessee yeah i feel like the spirit has been telling everyone to move to Tennessee from California. <laughs> That's what they think. <laughs> yeah, but then how many of those people are now regretting it? Did they, in, were they over-spiritualizing? So is, is that, is that anyone that says, oh, praise Jesus after everything? Does it include those people? No, okay. no. Uh, Jesus, it's, it's, Jesus a cousin. Is a, it's a cousin. It's a close cousin to yeah. what Andy's talking about. Like my mom. I mean, I love her, but like everything is praise Jesus. Oh, oh. Oh, hey, mom, you Biden got reelected. Praise Jesus, right? <laughs> well, Am that I not, right, That would mom? not be the conversation, but... <laughs> Sorry, you're going to say yes, something. Uh, Close. So I, I always remember this. We had a friend. We were in a small group for 10 or 12 years, and uh, one of the women in our small group always talked about how hard it was for her being a Christian. She, she come to Christ later in life. I think she was maybe um, early 30s late, late twenties. Um, so she had a good chunk portion of her life where she was not a Christian, did not know Jesus. Anyway, the, the point that she would make consistently was that she almost mourned the fact that she didn't have spiritual experiences and, and she felt like it was this huge hindrance to her in her, um, in her general experience as a Christian. Like she would pick Sunday mornings, for example, and, um, worship, worship time and, and would say, yeah, I like I don't I'm not I don't feel like I'm feeling the things that like other not people connecting. I I'm not I'm not if I look at the person next to me they seem emotional about the thing. Mm-hmm. And and I don't have that and she felt lesser. Uh in in who she was and and so many times we were like that's not how it works. Right. And so like for example because I've not, we talked about this before, because I've not heard audibly from God in my lacking in my faith is my spiritual journey, like less than people who have, I think it's just different. Now, I'm not going to criticize her to say like, it, it does seem like a wonderful thing. And, and I, and I could see how you would want to have those feelings. 
but don't be like that shouldn't be the thing you're chasing but how did she come to jesus if she uh, didn't have an experience did she just like well i'm just going to join something no 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 i didn't say she didn't have an experience but what i'm saying is she She's she would connected. say she didn't she on a regular basis yeah. um did not have spiritual experiences mm-hmm. okay. now by the way a lot of people would say they come come to um like lo- through 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 logic through reason would say hey this this makes sense to me i see i i i see and believe the person of jesus christ and um and the and i've experienced or recognize empirically the people who say and believe the things that he he said that seems like a good thing to do i'm going to do that it seems it it seems like the right thing to do. Yeah, mm-hmm. and yeah. so that's the. I was thinking about the Wesleyan quadrilateral. Sorry, I'm talking a lot here. That's all right. But like the like experience is a piece of that, and tradition, tradition, scripture, and, and reason. Uh, yeah, Domino's pizza is the the fourth one. Okay, Domino's. yeah. Well, that's then. I'm out. I can't. Can I touch do your mic too? The West West Wesleyan can quadrilateral. We all, can we all touch your mic? Yeah, if you want to. <laughs> um. Well, maybe this is like, hey. Leave us a tip on Instagram. You can do that now, and that way we can buy better stands. Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> um, my my experience to the logic thing it is near and dear to my heart. Yeah. You know, listening to me talk, I know you might think, oh, that guy's not very logical. Um, but it was logic. I was really into apologetics and like having rational explanations for everything, and it was logic that led me to question things and following logical rabbit trails that led me to de and reconstruct and come to a different sort of faith, sort of post evangelical Christianity, you know, whatever that definition is, some version of that because I'm not, I I am an experiential guy and I'm an emotional guy, but I always want to counterbalance that with like, okay, let's think about this completely. And I, I don't always do that perfectly, but that's kind of the logical aspect. And, explaining things and questioning is like a constant part of my life. So I appreciate that. Dave, do you remember what you were going to say? Cause you were starting to talk when I talked. I don't. That's okay. okay. I'll come back. I did. The term oh, came to my- again. <laughs> well, I think to kind of, from the way you introduced this segment, basically the people that are not finding or connecting or having these experiences feel like they should have these experiences therefore i'm not having experiences so i'm gonna be atheist something's wrong yeah i don't believe or, yeah well that- and there is something uh, uh, eventually i think a lot of there's probably a lot of people who are like i'm i'm not i don't feel it anymore and and so how do you, if you don't have the I, I don't know how to say this the right way, but if if there's a lack in your connection, your relationship with Jesus, if that if that's on thin ice already, and you're relying on emotional energy to get you through, when those emotions go away, then what do you have left? Yeah, yeah. I think that the church in general doesn't do a great job of promoting going and finding where you're fed. So a lot of people will join a church and just like, this is my church and I'm here yeah. and they may not be connecting and it may not be the right place for them. Mm-hmm. But most churches won't say that. It's hard though, Dave. It's hard to find people to it, join a church. It, it can be, but you know, you get go down, in where you fit in, you go down the street and you might <laughs> connect and then you have those experiences or whatever it is. Yeah. But I, I think yeah. part of the problem is sometimes the church is the worst thing for you know, God, Jesus, religion, whatever you want to say. Like the local church, particular local church, not big C church. Correct. But a particular local church might be the worst the thing building. for a particular individual. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you, do you have anything? Is there anything under the hood there? Like well, from, just, based on your experience? Uh, I mean, I just, I feel like, you know, as growing up in the church and being to a, a few different churches, you know, I think as you grow and if you, as you get seasoned, you tend to, I mean, I think you have the ones that are like, I'm a, I'm a lifetimer. I'm at this church. Sure, no I'm a lifetimer. What. I'm here. This is my church. Yeah. Then I think there's the other ones that as you mature, you're like, you know what? I need to go find, like maybe I'm sedentary. You know, like I'm not, I'm not growing anymore. I need to go find something different. And you reach that point and then you go find someplace else. You find another church, find another community yeah. and you start to grow again. You start to thrive. So I, I think. That's hard, man. That's, that's hard because it's hard. I did intent unintentionally with the Jordan. It's hard. It's hard to know. 
It's hard because you're balancing. If you've been in those, I, I can think of a time in my life where we were in that place, and um, y- you are simultaneously like building and investing in relationships with other mm-hmm. people, and those can be rich and fulfilling. But there can be the other part that's missing, and it sucks when you feel like you're in a place where you're having to do that trade off. And you're like, well, I know I'm not being stretched or grown here, but at least, at least I've got a great community, and maybe that's worth more. Right. Yeah. And and maybe it depends on the time in your life too. Well, for sure. Maybe that wasn't hypothetical. Mm, <laughs> I'll give you a toe tap for that. That was a lot of taps. That's, that's cute. Actually, kind of exciting. <laughs>